Maine, a place known for its many lakes, streams, and ponds, its long list of beautiful wildlife, and miles and miles of back road through dense forest without a block of civilization around. Join me as I show you what this great state has to offer. From foraging to fishing and wildlife conservation, we'll do it all. I live my life loving everything nature has to provide here. Stick around and maybe you'll learn a thing or two. At the very least, I hope you enjoy following along. Welcome to Wild Maine. Down here, take a peek. You can see right here is where the cache mound was. Right there, I had put a couple sticks crisscrossed, kind of made a platform for the trap to set on. Uh, a little makeshift, a little on the riskier side, but it gave the the trap something of a base to to operate properly on. Aiming for a front foot catch. Who knows what I got. Um, I don't see the beaver up here. So that can mean one of a couple things. Either he got out of the trap. 
or he made his way further down the, uh, the line. We'll see what we got. Hopefully he's not playing possum. Holy cow. Look at the size of that bad Sally. Look at that there, folks. It's a good beaver. Now we'll reset this thing. All right, pull it up on spot number two. Hopefully it's not too soft over here on the side of the bank. That everything was all torn up. I knew this was going to be a, a gold mine. Set this down, see if I can get my phone set up somewhere where it'll stay. There we go. Survey says. Got a beaver and all kinds of sticks. Wonderful. We're just clearing out the breed. That's all. Need a high three foot catch. Stick out of here. Day two on the beaver line, running the beaver fever, and only got two traps out because yesterday it rained like a bastard, and uh, didn't want to play around with the water levels rising too much, so just stuck with the two that I had out, reset them after catching those beaver, and uh, I'm gonna see what we got today. Pulling up on the first one now. Got a little help today. And uh, not too optimistic about this first spot, but you never know. We'll see. Yeah, the water level rose like two feet. This is crazy. So, one thing that's important to note. Is that with this rising water? Come on down here. You want to set your stake up to a point where if the water raises a lot, you're not going to be losing it in the water. Because then you're searching for, for your stake and your set, and that's never fun. And if not, you're waiting until the water level goes back down. Now, this is the stick that I had put the lure on. Didn't even bother setting a cast around here because it was too iced over, so. Went with my buddy Jared's trick and just went with a lure stick, some, some poplar that I shaved off, put a lure on top and set the trap there. Um, it's not there, which could be because the current pushed it off. It was not set well. Um, don't have much of a base there, not bedding the trap well, but we're going to pull it up, see if we got anything. Look at that. Another beauty. He 
decent sized beaver. Perfect so far. Now I'm going to demonstrate resetting this. Show you how, re how quick it is to reset the trap. Pull you down and lock up. Right to the state. Take your weight. Off we go. That's good and deep, so I don't really care if there's a little bit of slack. Then comes the fun part. I hate these bridges. Now I'm going to move this up a little bit today because of this water level. That ground is just solid ice. So screw it. I'm going to improvise. Get some nice poplar up here. I'm going to make it a little feed bed. I'm just going to clean that up against the grass. This is a, just going to be a Hail Mary set. Got the old smelly lure. So now on top of the stick. Just enough so that he comes to check it out. Quick and easy. We're done with this place. Spot number two right now. This is where I got a small one yesterday. I'd say probably a two-year-old based on the side of it, size of it. But it's that spot that's all torn up. You can see how the water level is risen quite a bit. I don't see a trap down there in the water. Need to shut up beaver. This is fresh, like last night. So either he was before or after the trap. That's not the same piece, but that's brand new. Let's see what we got on line number two. On a wait. Wow. Good one. Not really, I just got a lot of weights in here. Another great front foot catch. Now, front foot catch is what you ideally want on these because, as you see, beavers can have quite a bit of length to them. Now, this spot it doesn't matter because it's like four feet deep in there. And as long as your line's tight, then it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if you're in a little shallower water, say it's just up to your hips or whatever, and you get a rear foot catch, some of those beavers are long enough that they can get their nose above that water and coming up on a live beaver isn't the funnest thing. And make sure you got your 22 in the truck. I'm not big on thumping them.
Day three, out at set number one. Uh, pull up to the side of the road here, and uh, this is where I set the Hail Mary set. It's very bizarre. Um, just kind of put some scent on some sticks, because there was nowhere to put a cast around. There was nothing loose, it was all frozen. And uh, show you. Got this guy here. Got to get him dispatched. He's live up on bank, so starting the day off right. This just goes to show that when you're spring beaver trapping, it's not incredibly hard. As long as you got some good water around uh, and everything's broken up, the beaver tend to be moving. The most important thing is that you got good lure. When you look at a beaver, um, this one's covered in blood, so I'm not really going to demonstrate too much, but they have a huge nose. So they can smell stuff from a long ways away. Their eyes are really small. They rely less on those, obviously. And um, most beavers are more active at night. Uh, so a great lure goes a long way. As you see earlier, I uh, called this my Hail Mary set. Kind of half-assed it and just threw a bunch of poplar sticks together. Put some lure on top of it in front of the trap and called it a day. And uh, just goes to show you how well it works. On to the next one. Pulling up spot number two right now. We're gonna take a look, see what we got. I did set another set here yesterday where there's so much activity around. Uh, I wanted to, you know, obviously maximize my potential. So, set another trap. I normally would like to run a couple traps around the place anyway, but slow going right now with the water changing so much and I uh, a little crunched on time. Got a busy day today too, so I'm not gonna set any more. So, uh, let's go take a look, see what we got at this site. So you can see that set still there, not touched. Water levels dropped just a little bit. So I'm gonna take this, move it just a little bit deeper. You want it a few inches under the water there, even for a front foot catch, um, but you don't want their chest hitting it and setting it off. Pedaling over to the second one, the other side of the stream. And this here is why it's good to run a couple sets. There you see the caster mound, which actually is a caster mound that I set on that was made by a previous beaver. Um, that's what all those dark leaves were. You pulled it up from down, down bottom. Uh, fresh, it stomped. So I put some more mud on top of it, put some lure, and uh, made a set. Cable goes over the ice and drops it off. So I'm gonna set the phone down. big shelf of ice here. Can't get them up over the edge of it.
reset this. I've got two small ones, or smaller ones, and that large one out of this set. Oh, this site. So, there's at least another big one. But usually when you get a family of beaver, there's a couple big ones and a bunch of smaller ones. That was awkward. I saw the way. Just cast them out still there. Careful when you put your hands. Don't want to get a trap on your fingers. Not all trappers, though, unless we've got our fingers stuck in a beaver trap before. For all the PETA folks out there, it surprises you a little bit, but it doesn't hurt too, too bad. Yeah, it'll leave a little bit of a bruise, but don't be a Sally. Thanks for watching this episode of Wild Maine. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you want to get yourself a bottle of the best beaver lure out there, Caster Slayer by none other than Wicked Smelly Lures, please go to facebook.com slash wickedsmellylures. See you next time.